This is not just a video about a mole. This is a video about the mole. The molly, 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 molly. Just had to get that out of my system, you understand. Now then, this is the first mole that I'm going to show to you. Now, it's the funny thing about the mole is, although it's, you know, it certainly comes to my mind when I think about Thunderbirds, and yet it was actually in relatively few episodes, maybe four, and it didn't have its own pod, it tended to share a pod with another vehicle, like the Firefly, for example. And yet, people seem to really remember the mole, conceptually. I'm not, and I'm not quite sure why, because it's not as fast or as flashy or as versatile as many of the other Thunderbird craft. It just digs through the earth and pops you out where you need to be. And it's as simple as that. <laughs> um, but it is, nevertheless, it is carried by Thunderbird 2. Um, it doesn't have its own pod number. It's, it appeared in a couple of different pod numbers, I believe. But it was obviously, you know, very, very useful if you needed to get somebody out from somewhere that was underground or from, you know, from underneath a collapsed uh, building or something similar. So, the mole that you're looking at here is probably the last one that I've actually picked up of late. And I'm actually going to test a theory here whilst I'm recording this video, because my guess, and it is just a guess at this point, is that this Bandai mole, and it's Japanese, produced in 1993, as you can see from the box there, which is actually, was actually took me a little while to find. Um, I don't think Japanese toys are quite as, uh, sorry, this won't focus in for some reason, there we go. They're not quite as rap uh, sort of forthcoming with their information. So obviously, you know, I was looking for, for numbers, but actually, as it turns out, it's right on the front there. But as you can see, you know, it is a proper, proper Japanese version of the mole. But I think this is probably going to turn out to be the same as a Matchbox version of the bowl that was also released in 1993. And I have made that, that jump because, and this is, by the way, this is classic Japanese packaging for this sort of era, solid polystyrene. They love their solid poly polystyrene. Um, let me just show you the, the rest of the box before I move it away. So as you can see, you know, lots and lots of Japanese script. It's an ST version, which, which is basically standard, as opposed to DX, which is deluxe. And this is, again, this is very, very common for Bandai um, produced stuff. Now, the interesting thing about Bandai is they were also involved with Terrorhawks toys, but under the Poppy banner, although also Bandai, because Poppy was a subsidiary of Bandai. And um, obviously, after the sort of the eighties, when the the Terrorhawks were around, it's reverted to full on Bandai. But I do know of one other um, Bandai example of Thunderbird's production, which was Little Thunderbird Four. And I thought, ah, so what if this is an example of a Japanese Bandai toy, which is jumped into the European market through an association between Matchbox and Bandai again. So this is the theory that I'm testing now. And I can see out the corner of my eye that I may well be right. So a little bit of plastic there. I think that must have been just, just bubble wrap for the sake of bubble wrap. Um, now, being Bandai, and I'm fully expecting this, yes, to be very metallic quite heavy and that is a classic sign of a Japanese toy because the Japanese kept producing with die cast right up until the bitter end basically and they may well still do um, it's quite possible but early 90s this is for me personally this is a relatively late example of a, a Bandai toy in my possession um, we have a rotating digging cone which is nice during drill bit I guess and we also have actually it's possibly a slightly fractured um, drill bit end there. 
Now, this is sometimes a way to differentiate different ma manufacturers, different eras of moulds, because some have uh, these sort of cross bits on the end of the moulds, some do not. I'm still trying to, yeah, I think that might be a little bit broken. That's a bit naughty. I'm not sure the seller told me about that, but anyway. Um, the rest appears to be fine. And I think that this end piece is going to be indicative as well. Um, so, nice thing to have um, with, the, with the packaging. And I imagine that someone could, could fix that damage. Although I rather suspect that the broken piece is not in this box. Um, I may have to go back to eBay and see if they mentioned that at all, or it may have been in the pictures and I just didn't notice it because it's tiny. But as you can see, it's quite a nice detailed base for it, um, as bases for the mole go. Because this is how the mole arrived on the danger site, and it's also got its twin caterpillars, which is nice. So the mole would be transported on this base unit using the caterpillar tracks, then, it, then this would tilt up and it would be it would sort of launch itself off the top here and go down into the ground to begin its uh, drilling operations and you can see there this is bandai japan 1993 yeah but it's also mentions itc as well as a sort of general i think as the general copyright holders there so it was simply slide as many as many of these examples do of course it would just slide onto there like that so if you want to just move it around on its caterpillar tracks you can do so you know it's 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 a nice it's a really nice example of it um it's a solid die cast build so apart from that apart from the very fragile bit at the end there unfortunately it's probably not going to come to any great harm it's not linked to the um the base but obviously the the caterpillar tracks there seem to be fine, touch wood. Um, so yeah, a nice complete example. Now then, I'm gonna let me just leave that in the back of the shop there for reference purposes for myself and nothing else. Because, let me now show you this one. And as I say, this was best guess on my, my part. When I saw that one was available, I thought, I wonder if. Now here we have Matchbox and the Birds. This was not one that I'd noticed in the past, but I realized that whilst they'd done a small example of the mole, Matchbox also released this larger example of it. And fortunately, this one was already loose, albeit with a card back and its surrounding packaging. So I thought, excellent, that means I can get it out and show it to people like your good self. So, off comes the, the bubble, out comes the mole, and yes, it's definitely just by looking at it and looking and seeing the shine on it, you can tell immediately it's metal and it's the same one. And this one, that ironically enough, has got the, the end of the drill bit intact, you can see there. So that one's actually absolutely happy with life. But it is exactly the same. And there is the, the end piece, because as I say, that's always quite distinctive. They take different approaches with it um, across different manufacturers, but that's far too distinctive to be anything else. So there we have a shining example of a Bandai licensed product coming across to Matchbox to be used in Matchbox's range for Thunderbirds. And as, as, as I mentioned, not the first example. Now this one's quite interesting because it says, oh yes, this isn't, this isn't the one that's, that's wrong actually. Yeah, it's 1000 brake horsepower rocket powered engine. It launches off its driving base, drilling its way to the center of the disaster. This toy comes complete with rolling wheels and rotating drill units, which can be tilted and launched, which I've already demonstrated, obviously. Um, but that is, the, that is the Bandai edition, clearly. This is exactly the same. Um, so I've actually got two quite nice examples there of what is in effect of the Bandai. Now, let's just have a quick look. Now, this was the one that came out of that loose packaging. Now, is, does that still say... Ah, isn't that interesting? <laughs> so they didn't want to they didn't want to accept that it was Bandai. So you can see that the the Bandai has been replaced there. They they've actually put that is actually this is actually standout. So that isn't that's been placed or glued over the top of the original manufacturing information. Isn't that interesting? So the screws and everything else are exactly the same, but they've actually made out that it's Copyright and trademark 1993 ITC Ent, um, made in Taiwan, 
Whereas the other one just mentions Japan. There's no mention of Bandai there. Well, that's, that's very interesting. So presumably, in the, in the license arrangements, Matchbox weren't required to identify Bandai as the the originator, whereas they I think they I think they did do for the the Bandai Thunderbird 4, which was I think is, is the other crossover one. So there is copyright 1993 Taiko Toys Inc. made in Taiwan. That's really interesting. So there as I say I can't see any mention of Bandai there. But I bet you bottom dollar that it was an original Bandai production. I'm almost certain I did not first come from Matchbox. Um, yeah, I mean that's I think that's got to be the same the same one. It's got to be. Too many similarities for it not to be. So yeah, interesting little just a little bit of sleuthing on my part there, because as soon as I saw the um, the Bandai one, I thought I've seen I'm sure I've seen that before. <laughs> But ironically, the Bandai one is just in fractionally worse condition than the, the loose one, which is ironic, I know. But let's let's move on from those. Uh, let me just show you the, the final 1993 Matchbox one. Now, I'm saying it's 1993. I haven't actually double-checked that yet. Yes, 1993. Again, Tyco Toys, Inc. But this little mole comes in a package of, of several smaller vehicles, which you can, you can see there. Um, so this is a package with Firefly, um, now what's it called? I think they're just called the Rescue Vehicle or something, and a very small mole. Now I say very small, let me just give a quick size comparison there. So that's a much larger Bandai one. And as you can see, you know, it's, it, that, that is a significantly smaller one, because obviously it's coming in a much smaller blister back there. Um, so I'd say that's about half the size probably of the larger one um and it's got a little little bit of slightly different um end to it there as you can see it's actually got arguably a better sort of rocket thruster on the back of it um and it's got a, a cross bit piece to it on the front there but it's much much smaller and I, i'm not sure that i've ever seen these loose particularly to speak of um but as you can see, there's just this little bit of sort of playability to it. So when you twist the rocket engine on this one, the cone would actually turn. And it, again, it would come just come down off its sort of launch uh, uh, sort of caterpillar tracks there. So the mole, the ultimate underground digger with its 1000 brick horsepower rocket powered engine. Uh, it says that the same thing as it did on the previous one, basically. And that's it. Um, so those were Matchbox's mole examples um, for their sort of particular stab at the license. Then of course, if you're familiar with the, the history of these from my, my previous videos, we then move into what I call sort of the Carlton era. And the Carlton era took a slightly different approach to life in the sense that it used figures inside the vehicles. So it's a slightly different approach to Matchbox, which were sort of purely die cast. Um, apart from the really, really big supersize examples that they did, of course. So here we have an example of the Action Adventure set by Carlton, 1999. And there you have a mole on the left-hand side, which will take minifigures. And they are very, very minifigures. I mean, if I, if I do this again by, by reference to the, the Matchbox mole, you'll see that the Matchbox roll mole rather is again much bigger it's like a different shade of orange um so that this mole is about three quarters of the size i would say but it does fit these really tiny little mini mini action figures into it um or one of them at least and it does have the the cross bit so again that's a good sort of way to, to identify this particular one and again even it's for its size it's, it's pretty detailed unfortunately i don't think i have a loose one to show you but you can see it's quite blank on the, the back end there so if you were looking for you know a sort of a, a way to identify it that's that's what it looks like and obviously there is a a, a seam running along the side of it and at the back there because you've got to be able to get lift this up to get the minifigure into it. So there, it's it's a nice way to find it if you can find it on this sort of this three pack because you, because you also get a lot of other stuff with it. Um, but you can see it's there on the on the back as well with the other vehicles. 
So it's quite a it's quite a nice thing to have, and um, you can see it's mentioning the the pit of peril there as an example of one of the episodes that the the mole was was used in. Um, so if you were super keen on sort of playing out a particular episode, then, that, then that's the way that you would do it. Now this is a very fetching plastic bag, but it does of course contain a mole. But this mole was for the longest time my mystery mole, <laughs> because I did not know where it had come from. But you see loads of these around, and yet they're both limited quality and yet not, because they do have some play functionality to them. It's a, it's a funny sort of mix, but as someone in the, in the comments very kindly note, noted to me, some of the vehicles that I couldn't identify did in fact come from Mr. KFC here. Um, so Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurants here in the UK had a tie-in with Carlton to help promote their release of the Thunderbirds toys and the re release of Thunderbirds generally. And this is what we got. So yeah, this one's actually got the, uh, the also collecting leaflet in because there were about four examples of these KFC toys. And I, I picked up two of these along the way. So I had literally, you know, I, I, I picked these up and I could not identify them for love nor money because of course they didn't come in normal packaging. And they were quite difficult to identify just off the back of their, the, the sort of information that you could get because they were tiny, tiny little um, details just down the bottom there, which were very hard to make out and still are. In fact, I, mean, I, still, I still can't read that on, on, a, on a small phone screen, but I think that's basically mentioning Carlton. So I was able to place them kind of year-wise, but I didn't know quite how they'd appeared. I, I thought perhaps they'd come in a Thunderbird 2, but no, they hadn't. They, they came from KFC packs. And what I like, quite like about them, conceptually, is that when you move them, the drill bit spins. So I quite like that, the fact that they didn't have to bother with that. Functionality-wise, they really didn't have to bother, but they did. And it's still, they still pop up a little bit like that as well. Now, I, they don't actually detach. They are fully fixed on. You can see that you can probably see there's a sort of screw there. Um, so these, you will never see these loose separated from their bases because they're well and truly stuck on there. But nevertheless, you know, they are what they are. Um, and I guess in a sense, maybe it makes sense they didn't want really little children being able to detach them in the restaurants because they, they could have swallowed them, you know, or tried to. So that is one of the, that was, I mean, as I say, it took, it took me posting stuff on YouTube to figure out that that's where these mystery moles come from. And you do see them quite frequently because obviously they would have produced them in vast quantities for, for meals. So um, that is the, the, the resolution of, of that particular mystery. So we're still in the sort of 99-2000 era. Now, let's skip forward a little bit. And when we skip forward a little bit, we get to a point where Thunderbirds is um, experiencing, I think it was its 40th anniversary. So we're into the sort of mid 2000s. And this arrived, although I didn't know this had arrived. Now, if you can imagine that being pictured alongside the smaller version of it, which of course is this version from this card set, you, you could easily mistake it for the smaller version because it is an almost direct blow up of the smaller version. And that's because it is a blow up of the smaller version. So I discovered this with the Firefly and then someone noted to me, again, I think in one of the comments to my other videos that both the Firefly and the Mole got this treatment. So. I'll, I'll just bring in one of my, the many, many fireflies I now have as a, as a result of this. But what happened was that they, they re-released Thunderbird 2, the super-sized Carlton Thunderbird 2. And what happened was that as a result of when they did that, they opted to bring out with it super-sized versions of Firefly and the Mole that you got inside Thunderbird 2 well, sorry, they were scaled for Thunderbird 2's pod in that re-release. So as a result, they needed to be that much bigger. And so we have a Firefly and a Mole 
which take the minifigures that come from these packages, um, but they, they sort of reconfigure the cockpits a little bit so that they still fit, even though the cockpits are much bigger. And it, this mold, I think personally, is, is much harder to find because you only get it from the Thunderbird 2 pod. So, you, you know, unless you had that super-sized Thunderbird 2 from that anniversary release, you wouldn't otherwise have seen this. And it did take me quite a while to find this, and in fact I had to get it with another Firefly, because that was the only way that I could get my hands on it. But again, you know, we've got the, sort of the cross bit here, but it's quite sort of big and chunky. It doesn't particularly do anything more than the previous one did, but it does lift up like that, and you can then detach it from its, from its base, and, and off it can pop. So, you know, it has that sort of functionality to it. It's the same as a small one. Um, but as you can see, if I can remember how to get into this one, because they are actually quite tricky to open, to, to my mind. There we go. It's kind of counterintuitive. It sort of opens away from the way you might think it does. But it's got this, this little sort of blocker there, which I think someone mentioned to me, so that instead of just having one, it's got two. So the little figure just rests up against this first... Um, sort of barrier there so that it can't just roll around inside that rather cavernous space because of course the minifigures weren't scaled for this size of, um, of vehicle but it's just um, a nice one to have for completeness for the sake of doing this video primarily um, but, but it also means that you you could have a Thunderbird 4 and a fire and um, a Firefly and a mole for your Thunderbird 2 which is Far more, you know, it's, 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 it's a better mix of things to have if you're trying to do little sort of recreations of the show and stuff if you were a kid, you know, if that was your thing, then you could do that now because you had a, a better scaled mould to play with. So that was a nice one to sort of finally pick up just to sort of round off the, the collection. Now, now this is a Carlton Soundtech um, 40th anniversary set, which happens to come with the standard Carlton Soundtech Thunderbird 2, which in turn came with a small mole, which is unusual because none of the other smaller Thunderbird 2 models that I'm aware of ever came with a mole. So this one came with Thunderbird 4, you can see there, and a mole. Um, so, you know, that is, it's kind of my my thumb length. It's not, it's not huge. Um, so if you ever see a small one like that, that's got a sort of greyish caterpillar track on the bottom of it, uh, two red dots on top and another one at the bottom there, that will be um, a Carlton Small Thunderbird 2 mole. And if you see those, you've gotten even luckier because this, to my, to my knowledge, is the only place you can get these really small Carlton mobile vehicles, being the Firefly and the Rescue Vehicle there, I believe. Um, the ones, that, the other ones I've shown you earlier in this video were Matchbox ones. So these are the Carlton equivalents, effectively, of the the small Matchbox versions that came out several years prior. Um, so yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not really sure why they suddenly decided to, to bring this particular set out. But as I say, nevertheless, prior to this, you would have just got them on a, on any sort of box set of a smaller Carlton Thunderbird too. So um, that that's it for that one. Along with the Bandai one I got um, more recently, which is and yeah, which is older, uh, the this is probably slightly later than the one I'm about to show you. But the best date I can give you for this one is is about 2003, I believe. And this isn't something I've ever picked up before, in the sense that this is Konami. And I've seen many auctions in which Konami were, you know, had various Konami products were being sold, and. Um, Again, Japanese manufacturer. So of course the level of detail on this, even though it's relatively small, is really, really nice. Um, and it's got this navy blue color, which they often do um, with with sort of, you know, when they're actually doing a really, really accurate version of it. So rather than it being dark gray, it's actually dark navy, which I suspect is more accurate. Um, so you can see here, it's got the caterpillar treads that the mole uses to get itself back up out of the ground once it's gone in and indeed to drive itself forwards um, as well as its normal treads there it's got the that sort of approach to the engine which um, I think we saw in the Bandai version as well and again we've got a nice sort of mole um, 
drill bit there and it slides like that now it's interesting because you can't slide it forwards off you have to you'd have to take it back off and then sort of move it down because they've chosen to allow you to display it like this and there's little there's a little tiny stand that it comes with as well so in theory to have it complete you'd need that and then that stand will just sort of slot into the um, the base of the mole uh, ramp here and keep it keep it up so you could just have it looking as if it was going to about to go down and it also comes with um a little display base like this so you can just sort of pop it on there and it also it should also have these little instructions with it and of course the instructions are completely japanese so this clearly wasn't designed ever you know to, as a sort of an, as an export but interestingly this is mentioning volume two and i'm just going to have a quick check of something well i was <laughs> I was, I was wrong in, in terms of what I was thinking, but I, it also means that I have found you another mole to look at. Because um, you might have seen on another, on another video that I picked up this rather lovely set. And this is actually a Bandai set, so it's not Konami, but you can see that this mole here is not massively dissimilar to the one we've just looked at, but it isn't the same. So it is another different example, but it's a later example linked to Hot Wheels this time. Um, rather than Matchbox. but This is linked to Hot Wheels, but it's still a Bandai produced Thunderbird set. Um, and I am now wondering, again, we've got a sort of a, we've got a sort of Japanese crossover here because we've got a lot of Japanese wording there. So I'm just wondering if it's going to mention the, the year somewhere on the back here that I can quickly pick out for you. Um, I don't think it is particularly. Unless I'm being really slow about it, I can't immediately... They seem to like putting telephone numbers on the back of their packaging. It's funny. Um, that must just be a very sort of uh, a Japanese thing. I'm just having a quick look. So you can see it's sort of it's, it's still a Carlton licensed product. Oh, there is a Bandai there, isn't there? So that's 2003. So actually, interestingly, maybe around the same time as the Konami from what I found out. But the reason I went to this is because I think this was described as being a volume number. And I just noticed on, on the, the top of that leaf that there, that this is volume two. Um, yeah, and this one's, this is a volume three, um, as you can see there. So this is what, that's why, that's, why, that's why my mind just jumped. But on the plus side, it does mean I've shown you another example of a mole. Now, this is by no means every single mole ever produced. You know, there are clearly lots and lots of them. I mean, I think of the ones I have, this Konami one is probably one of the nicest, which is unfortunate because it makes me want to buy other Konami things now, <laughs> but they are, on the plus side, they are quite small. They're not generally massively expensive either. So I think if you just wanted to sort of quite a small, discreet display of Thunderbirds models, you could go worse than these Konamis, particularly if you're willing to, you know, sort of put them together a little bit because they're probably far more show accurate than some of the other ones. Um, so I'm quite glad I picked that up as a, as, as a concept. And I also got a couple of other bits with it as well, but um, I've kind of already done the videos for the other bits. But as I say, for display purposes, these are really, really nice. Um, and I've always liked, you know, I'm, I'm having a bit of a poppy phase at the moment. And, you know, Japanese models are brilliant. If you can get them in this country, obviously, that's, that's the only trick. So, um, I was. I am going to go and have a quick look for one other thing. Now, as is often the way with these things, I was just packing up for the night, and then I had a sudden realization that I'd missed a mole, basically. And in miss, in realizing that, I went hunting for it. But then I found this bag of goodies, which is the rather random section of parts that you get to try and create pod vehicles using the um, Super Size Thunderbird 2 from the Thunderbirds Argo toy line from 2015 or so. Um, and in fact, I don't think these parts actually come with it, but obviously, you know, that's these are how their eight pod vehicles would be formed. And this is their example of the mole. And it would run something like this. Basically, you would take this piece and attach it to that. And that would form your mole. I kid you not. 
that is that is as close as you get in the the modern world to having an actual mole. I'm not even sure exactly how that's supposed to connect. Maybe I'm missing a piece that is in an intermediate piece, but basically you'd have you'd end up with something like that. Um, and that's you know that that unfortunately is as near as you get to an actual mole because they rather I mean in fairness to them it's a clever idea because you you get maximum modularity out of just having bits and pieces in the Thunderbird two pod you don't really need a specific pod unless you're taking Thunderbird four um, so out of that sort of pod building mechanism you can create a mole. I will just mention as well that I, I mentioned Poppy um, and Poppinika earlier on as um, a, a, a manufacturer of Japanese toys. And there are some very early moles that were produced by them more around the time of the sort of, you know, early 70s. And so obviously they would have been one of the first exemplars of the mole in a toy form. Um, but I'm afraid I don't have any of those. Um, I don't know if JR21 ever released the mole as a, as a toy. Um, I don't know if it would have lent itself to, to that for them, but certainly um, I, you know, I know the, the Popanika um, versions were available at the time. So on that, I will leave it there. I um, hope you enjoyed that one. Um, the only other one I can really think of doing at, the, at this point is possibly Fab One. Um, I do have some examples of Fab One that I could show you, um, but again, they probably wouldn't go right back to the beginning. But uh, let me know in the comments what you think of the mole. Do like and subscribe as ever, and I'll catch you for another one soon. Cheers for now.